Stores of non-perishable food, water bottles, gas masks, weapons. More and more Americans are preparing for the worst. The collapse of vital infrastructure, riot civil war, even nuclear attack. Some are buying spots at survival camps deep in the woods, others building shelters in their front yards. Until recently, these so-called preppers were often ridiculed, with fear now reaching every level of society that isn't the case anymore. Texas. We begin our journey through the world of preppers at a Fortitude Ranch, a commercial chain of survival communities preparing for war and chaos. Drew Miller, a military veteran, developed the concept 10 years ago. We're trying to keep things affordable for the middle class. So for a little more than $1,000 per person per year, you can shelter your family if you do a long-term membership. Uh, we also have economy and luxury rooms if you want a little nicer place to stay. But... Places like this are opening all over the United States right now, overseen by managers who make sure everything is ready to go at a moment's notice. These are standard shipping containers and a lot of preppers use these. This is a 20 foot one. There's a 40 foot container next door. Uh, but we keep our food here. It's underground. It's nice and cool. You can already feel the temperature going down. In the last couple of years, people have realized that, you know, if there's a virus, if there's a pandemic, if the electric grid goes down, uh, it's going to be chaos. We use the term collapse. Uh, the economy will stop functioning. People aren't going to go to work if there's a bad pandemic. They aren't going to work if our electrical system isn't functioning. They're just going to stay home. Nothing gets produced, no food gets delivered. How realistic are these apocalyptic scenarios? Experts continually warn of possible blackouts due to, for example, cyber attacks on power grid. For Drew, it's clear what would happen then. Most people aren't preppers. So what are the people going to do who aren't prepared? Well, they're going to have to go out and steal from others who are prepared. Accordingly, Fortitude ranches have not only several months worth of food supplies, but also a defense strategy. Let's say I'm a marauder and I'm out there sitting with the weapon putting here and there's people just inside there. As soon as you open the door and come out, I'm going to shoot you. You have to be able to defend the door. So we pile up rocks into a wall. Actually, I should go grab a rifle. Hang on, I'll be right back. Drew fetches his semi-automatic RA-15. So when someone's coming there, I just rest my weapon right here. You're now attacking me. You're completely in the open, nothing to hide behind. These trees are chopped down and uh, you're a big shot and you can't shoot accurately. You're up in the air holding your weapon trying to shoot. So the odds are it's a 10 to one advantage for a defender in a prepared position like this. The watchtower is Drew Miller's pride and joy. It allows overwatch of the entire area. Several families should find safety here, maybe soon when the US elects its next president. We could have civil war after an election because our country is just so polarized, uh, so pulled apart that if it's a close election and there's some cheating or believed to be cheating, uh, one or the other sides will just say, no, we don't buy it. Drew is not alone with these concerns. The fear of violence is growing across all political camps. Whatever occurs, whatever triggers the collapse, if our members can get here, we can keep them alive. We head to another Fortitude Ranch, this one in West Virginia. Many consider preppers to be alarmists, people imagining improbable horror scenarios. Others see them as an opportunity to cash in. Drew Miller's descriptions, though, resonate with me. What if he's right? We are not permitted to disclose the coordinates of this ranch. Many preppers also prefer to remain anonymous, so we won't show their faces. It gives you a lot of peace of mind that you, you, you have some place to go. There's a, you know, a number of us that will all come up here. You know a lot of them. And you're going to take care of each other. you got a community. That's mm -hmm. the whole that's, that's key huge. for survival. If, and I God, I hope nothing happens that would have to force you to come up here. 
I'm really getting nervous here about what are we going to do? We, we, I'm useless. I know how to use a spreadsheet. Uh, I know how to, uh, I don't know how to make my own food. I don't know how to, uh, survive in a, in a more primal sense. I'm not a gun person <laughs> at all. I, I, we did not have these, these rifles or anything no, before no. we joined. But we it's important, you know, it's important not only for, for here, if something would happen, but I mean, just, you know, general, um, mm -hmm. self-defense. There are annual meetings where firearms defense is practiced. Stephen Wren and Ari Baylor, also military veterans, oversee this ranch and lead the training. And, and maybe switching between the rifle and pistol. So we encourage our members to have uh, an M16 and a 9mm sidearm. This is hot. So you could see where this would be a good defensive round. It, it would get all of those in, in one area. If you come to the training for the first time, the only thing you're gonna get is a familiarization. Uh, you're uh, gonna get to fire the M16, 12 gauge shotgun, and maybe a nine millimeter pistol. Charged, range is hot. Weapons you can get without a license in West Virginia if you're 18. in Texas. Not all preppers want to end up isolated in the woods with like-minded people. Instead, they are banking on an insurance policy made of steel in their own backyard. Ron Hubbard has been in the bunker business for 10 years, and that business is as successful as never before. Everybody's on board. No one thinks anybody's crazy for buying bomb shelters now. My shelters afford you that luxury that you can go into them and breathe its own air that is filtered from biological matter, chemical matter, or nuclear fallout. If you turn on the news, you see North Korea talking about nukes. You see Russia talking about nukes. You see China talking about nukes. I've never seen so many people talking about nuclear weapons in my lifetime, and it's scary. And that drives people to buy bunkers. In contrast to Germany, hardly anyone in the U.S. expects the state to provide shelters. Accordingly, private demand is booming. These are standard bunkers, 3 by 12 meters in size, with basic equipment starting at $200,000. It's got a regular flushing toilet, vanity, granite. Look at these beautiful sliding doors. It has the underfloor storage here, so these will lift up. And all this down here is storage, and there's also water tanks that are built in. And then, of course, the most important thing, the air would run through this carbon filter with the HEPA filter in it, and would give you breathable air. And when this is furnished and everything's going, you just feel like you're in an apartment. I don't really share Ron's enthusiasm. The idea of spending days, maybe weeks underground, triggers anxiety rather than a sense of security. Not to mention that you pay dearly for it. And you're thinking, what about the regular people? Uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but it, and it's not fair, but the, the elites, the wealthy, get to live a better life than the rest of us. So what to do if you can't afford to have a bunker built in your front yard? Near Austin, Texas, we meet another prepper at his home. John Stokes is in the Bitcoin business. He used to live in San Francisco and started prepping for disaster while living in that earthquake-prone region. It doesn't take a lot of money to get into into prepping if you're thinking of prepping as gear accumulation and buying um, you know, Leatherman tools or pocket knives or backpacks or this kind of thing, tents even. A lot of this stuff, uh, the prices have, have, have been uh, affordable for ordinary people. When I got started, uh, my goal was like 72 hours you know, of food and water um, and, and no power, this kind of thing. And then I stretched it out to two weeks and you know, now I'm probably at like six months. The 4,000 liter tank in the garden can supply him, his wife and three daughters with water for around three months. 
What tips does this season prepper have for beginners like me? Start with something that can sustain you for 72 hours. You want food that you don't have to cook or prepare, you know, so, um, or that you can prepare just with boiling water. Um, so peanut butter is really good. There's a lot of fat, there's a lot of protein, um, things of that nature, like snack foods, you know, something that's not too sugary, um, but things that will make you feel satiated. And so you want 72 hours of food and water. You want to have water storage. If you have to leave suddenly, you want to grab the bag and run. Myself, my wife, my three girls, they all have a bug out bag. They're not all this large. Um, the kids are more focused on food and hygiene and some water. Uh, my wife, hers is a little bit specialized, mine is a little bit specialized, but this is a, generally has most of the things that we would need. This is more of a urban type of thing. Um, it's got this spike on it because this is good for digging, it's good for prying. Um, I could bust a lock with it. Um, I would not really try to use this as a weapon unless I had to because I'm not trained in anything like this. So this is a first aid kit. Everything from a trauma kit, tourniquet. I've got food, signaling, fire making. These are some blankets, signal mirror, more hygiene. This is food. This is a sleeping pad. This canteen is, is typical of the kind of preps that a prepper looks for. So this is a single walled canteen. It is not insulated. What that means is that you can boil water in this. Uh, so I can not only store water in it and keep it relatively cool, I can also boil and purify water in it and I can cook inside of it. Yeah, I have playing cards. So, so this is one of the things that people overlook. You know, if you're stuck somewhere, if I was stuck underground with the family for five days, uh, I may want to keep morale up. And so uh, many preppers will have some playing cards. These are some waterproof playing cards. My wife is not uh, classically a prepper but she appreciates that I do this and she supports it. So she's glad that it's something that she doesn't have to think about and that I have taken care of and it's kind of my thing. You could do something like this for probably under $1,000. Um, this is probably uh, maybe five to 6,000 worth of stuff. My journey through the growing world of preppers has changed my outlook. Even though I don't think the next civil war is inevitable, I have a small bag packed and the pantry stocked. After all, I live in the USA.